Hello, Dr. Jason Munsell here, uh, the Blue Monkey. If you've ever uh, ever go to Memphis, uh, go to the Blue Monkey. Uh, there's a couple of them uh, owned by uh, one of my uh, buddies uh, from college. In any case, um, a few more things that I want to say about Chapter 2. We'll see uh, how much stuff I get through uh, today. I think I uh, emailed, why not, I emailed you this morning. Uh, it's been sort of a long day. We have the uh, security folks here pretty much all day uh, putting in a new security system for my mom. Uh, they were supposed to be finished um, at a certain time. Did, did they finish then? Of course not. But in any case, okay, so um, you just keep on doing all the various stuff that you have uh, been doing. Um, and I found uh, quite a few more of you on uh, Twitter and, and Tumblr and all that jazz. I uh, still haven't found all of you. Um, maybe some of you have not done uh, much of anything. Uh, but uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll search, I'll continue to search. But again, this is only the second week out of eight. Um, so we got a lot. We're, we're together until August 5th. So we're, um, we're all summer long together. Um, PowerPoint number three here for chapter two. Sorry, PowerPoint is there. That's no fun. What's wrong with that? Let me see here. I need to do it. There we go, persuasion. All right. Uh, symbolic convergence and uses in gratification theory. Uh, so a couple of things I want to say here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, social construction of reality type stuff. And so uh, when we move to symbolic convergence theory, uh, we're talking uh, more about uh, back to sort of rhetorical humanistic approach. Um, and I do believe that both cognitive dissonance that we've talked about and, and the elaboration likelihood model are much more social scientific or psychological, as I've said previously, um, or what some people call communication science uh, these days. Um, so this is much more rhetorical from my point of view, or as Borman is a, a small group, but from a, a rhetorical point of view. Um, and so we're looking at, in a sense, how uh, meaning and how uh, certain uh, symbols, uh, whatever uh, you might want to call them, uh, construct for us a certain view of uh, reality. Um, so uh, basically the idea here is that groups of people, and so we're interested in, in groups of people, how their symbols converge to offer a certain pers uh, perspective of reality, how uh, certain groups of people use messages to dramatize various events or past and future actions uh, using puns, analogies, fables, brands these days, uh, narratives, whatever. Uh, and Borman calls these fantasies, not because they're uh, a fantasy per se, but he just recalls uh, it because these... these um, sayings uh, are sort of fragments of our uh, imagination as pretty much everything is or are i don't know um so well creative interpretations of events by groups to fulfill some sort of need um and so uh, so all sorts of things going on there uh there's some interesting things uh, so far as um the, again, the whole idea is that people use these narratives, use these fantasies uh, in, in part to uh, create a, a sense of reality through these, the, the, the fabric of these fantasies, and that's the symbolic convergence. Start with people within certain groups, whatever that group might be, uh, members of Columbia College, members of a particular community, uh, you start seeing the world and uh, people of, of different uh, religious points of view, people of different uh, political points of view start seeing the world uh, in very similar ways. Uh, they construct reality in uh, very similar ways. They see reality in very similar ways. Um, so some basic stuff, uh, fantasy themes, as, he's, as uh, Borman says, and as our book says, are contents of stories, um, uh, contents of stories that are retold by the group. Uh, sometimes groups develop particular fantasies that have similar plot, outlines, scenes, and characters, what have you. Repeated patterns are known as fantasy types. Uh, the fantasy themes chain out among the mem uh, members and the group forms a rhetorical vision, that is the vision of, of how people see uh, reality. 
And Borman says, when a number of people come to share a cluster of fantasy themes and types, they may integrate them into a coherent rhetorical vision of some aspect of their social reality. Um, some rhetorical visions are so powerful for people that they live their lives according to them. Borman calls this phenomenon lifestyle rhetorical vision. Religion is an example. Uh, the story of Christmas, right? Or resurrection, all that type of stuff is, is, uh, is, is, uh, is and of course, there's an example here. Um, but what I started to think about is what are the fantasies of Columbia College? Uh, do, are there fantasy themes, blah, 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 blah. Um, one thing, I couldn't find the history. Um, that we used to have a, a little bit of a history thing on the uh, website. Um, and uh, if you've ever read the history, I couldn't find it. And then they had taken it off, but it's sort of a, a history of fires. Um, we had a fire, but a lot of something burned down. We you know, had a fire again in the 60s, burned down. You know, so like, we always came back resilient. We tell these stories over and over again. You probably heard President Dendorf tell these stories or whatever. Um, and I also looked at, uh, if you go and, and, and find uh, President Dendorf's sort of uh, a letter to folks on our um, page about you're on your way, uh, on your way has become sort of a new brand, um, but also at the same time, it's sort of a, uh, as people talk about this and it, as it sort of chains out, it becomes this rhetorical uh, vision, a uh, shared reality of, you know, this is the future, we're on our way to the future. <laughs> so, um, and there's some koalas. They are hugging and they are on their way. Um, but basically, the, the, the long and the short of it, it this is not a, a terribly uh, difficult theory to understand. And I think, if anything, uh, the difficulty is the way that it's talked about, the terms that are used, like the whole idea of fantasy is sort of weird. Um, but you could all, again, you know, just like um, any story, sometimes there's good guys, there's bad guys. Um, you know, and so this example from Margaret Duffy um, is a really pretty good example. Um, but, it, and it does say, the book does say, symbolic virtues theory is a good way to view persuasion in the media age because mass media important variables in chaining out process. Um, the Obama birth example provides insight to how media perpetuate fantasy themes and the culture comes to believe what they see and hear even though it might not be uh, the case. And so basically, the long and short of it is that we, we can boil it down to organizations, groups of people, whatever, uh, share these stories over and over again through repetition, share these uh, you know, um, uh, brands or these slogans, make America great again, blah, blah, blah. And it just uh, it becomes sort of a way of seeing and looking at the, at the world. And it therefore constructs uh, a worldview for these people. Yeah. Oh, that's it. That's pretty much it. Huh. Uh, uses and gratification is, is a really quite a different thing. Um, and so it's actually in the section where it's talking about media theories. QT, delicious iced tea. Um, and we're not going to talk about the one-shot model because that's pretty old. Um, but... Um, and the media theories are not, all these theories sort of blur into one another regardless of, of the way that they are talked about within this uh, initial um, bit about the focus. Uh, yeah, uses and gratification, cultivation, analysis, and agenda setting is all about media stuff. But uses and gratification is really interesting because more than anything else, uh, the one-shot model, um, and even the two-step flow model, which is a little bit old, and I'll let you read that because I'm skipping those two things, um, oftentimes we thought of uh, audiences as sort of passive uh, dopes, right? You know, we just, we, we, we get something and, and uh, we, we go, oh yeah, we'll go we'll buy this. We, we see a toothpaste commercial that says, you know, it's, we, we, you know, brush your teeth with this toothbrush and we'll actually straighten your teeth and we'll, you know, we go, oh yeah, we'll, we'll buy it. Um, but we are more active than that. And also we can use uh, media in, in multiple ways. And so uses and gratification uh, research basically, and I'll let you again read it, is, is you know, how, we, um, how we use media, the different ways that we use it, and how we get gratification from the use of that. 
therefore uses uh, gratification. And there is the phone. And since my, uh, no, I'm the only person here, I probably ought to get it because it could be important. So I believe that 